I will uh, speak. Uh, I will now speak about the uh, 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 notebooks, about this uh, how this uh, system uh, works as a as an ecosystem, as a foundational stuff for the first of all for the data analysis and machine learning things. I'm uh, I'm, work f uh, I'm currently working for SIP Software. is It is a uh, a uh, European co uh, company with headquarters in Germany and in, with uh, R&D and uh, uh, software development center in Minsk. And we uh, use uh, Python a, a lot for, mostly for machine learning stuff, for prototyping, for coordinating different algorithms and things like that. And the overview of my talk will be as follows. I first uh, will uh, give an, some introduction, what is Jupyter, a bit of his e history and some simple examples. Then I will sp uh, speak about its ac uh, uh, architecture, how it's uh, b uh, built, how, uh, wh what is its intrinsic limitation, so to say. My uh, focus of my talk not be about some of its features, but on its overall structure and on the features that are directly related with this structure. And then I will speak about its uh, use as a leaf document, as a document containing both code explanations and the results, and the interac fully interactive da uh, data science front end. Well, what is Jupyter? If you just open the, its main uh, web page, you will see this uh, nice picture with the Jupyter logo in the, in the middle. And these faint logos of several programming languages around it. So it's uh, it was uh, in, it, it is um, at least some to say marketed or, or presented as a center to do, uh, to work with many pr programming languages. Let's uh, le let's say how it works. Well, in its uh, description, it is uh, some few words about it, it is a tool. Uh, <laughs> aiming to interactive computing, reproducible research, and software-based communication. And how it can be used? Well, you can uh, just install it use, uh, using PIP, or if you use Anaconda, as many uh, people who work, uh, work with uh, machine learning data science uh, stack you used, to, uh, used to be, it is built in, and you just started, for example, in this case, using the AT port in your computer, probably a bit harder. And then you can you see just you you can create things uh, just like here. By the way, my talk is just a Jupyter notebook itself, and you can oops, sorry. You can uh, do some uh, do, do some uh, hypertext. In this case, this is Markdown. Add mathematical equations, com complex, not very complex, and the Python code here. And the very simple result here: you can uh, draw a plot of some function. Uh, if you don't want to, uh, don't need to install, you can. Uh, Check a bit. It's in uh, uh, leaf mode on its server. So a bit of its history. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's better. So the Jupyter was uh, initially it was named as IPython, short for Interactive Python, and uh, even now it is still. Uh, Called by IPython because IPython is still here is is and is still important part of uh, Jupyter ecosystem, and it was started in uh, rather uh, long uh, rather time away in uh, in the past into uh, in 2001 as a as a rather small this gist is something like. 300 lines of Python code as an attempt to, uh, to, uh, to create more co co convenient Python console for the everyday work. Then it was uh, uh, some other evolution and <coughs> uh, starting from uh, two, uh, 2011, the uh, 
it, uh, the notebook was created, and then the years, the years before now, it was uh, called Big Split. When people uh, in, the IPy, uh, in this IPython team uh, saw that it is necessary to add better support for some other languages, they aimed Julia, Python, and R, first of all. And because it was renamed to Jupyter and its architecture was changed to allow this. And the language agnostics parts were put in one part, but the language itself was put into so-called kernel. I will speak about this a little bit later. But, uh, well, unfortunately, unfortunately, this big, uh, this big split was resulted non in uh, support of uh, other languages, because nobody from these languages uh, co communities uh, became, an, in, in fact, very much interested. But in uh, it, it, but instead, it resulted in better and more flexible, more interesting thing we have now. Oh, something wrong. Okay. Okay. So let's speak about its architecture. The Jupyter is uh, looks like more or less uh, easy. It, it is. Uh, it has a server, universal notebook server in the middle, that processes a notebook file that is just JSON. Then it communicate with uh, with a kernel. Kernel is uh, some interpreter or some other things that uh, do com uh, computations to do some in, uh, useful things in uh, target language. And then everything is brought to the, uh, to the browser as an interactive applica a web application, and the user can interact with it. The <coughs> behind of all of these are the IPython is the main kernel of, uh, uh, main comp uh, computational kernel of this uh, system. Zero MQ is a message queue, or as it was called initially, but its developers as a socket on steroids, very fast message queue to process messages. Tornado web server, jQuery and Bootstrap, this for, uh, for mo mostly for JavaScript application. MouseJax is very important uh, JavaScript uh, library here because in many uh, no, uh, notebooks, you will, you will see the um, equations as Majax is rendering it, and the, uh, the notebook itself is just a special kind of JSON format. So, um, it, uh, as I told, it was initially targeted for languages beyond Python. In a Python wiki, it is still a more or less good uh, more or less fresh uh, uh, list of languages supported. But as far as my experience told me, I'm be very, <coughs> very lucky if some, uh, somebody will told me this is wrong. But I'm afraid that not, not, uh, not, not much people are using uh, languages uh, beside Python. But instead, for many, uh, for many tasks, uh, the user of Jupyter Notebook will have a UI for free, it can uh, work not only with Python Damian languages, but uh, with non, uh, but with other things like uh, uh, Cyton, like uh, other languages. The client server is again for free, and the parallelization or clustering can also be added more or less easily because of its architecture. Uh, one thing that was from the very initial. Uh, releases of uh, IPython and Jupyter is uh, uh, access to history of inputs and outputs. Some people s blame it because they say, okay, it uh, will result in non-sequential uh, and non, uh, uh, sometimes it, uh, it can lead to very strange uh, success, uh, succession of operators in the program, but uh, some people instead find it very, very important for exploratory uh, use when, 
the programmer don't know for, uh, in, in, up front what, what should be done, but just playing with numbers, playing with algorithms, trying to combine algorithms in some particular way and need to find, uh, to find something that uh, he or she just calculated an hour before, but n never added to some uh, variable or some class. But uh, this history uh, sometimes can result in caveat. For example, here I can easily uh, access uh, my very first cell, uh, the pieces of code here, I name it cells, and I can rather easily, uh, rather easily access it. Or when I <coughs> produce it, the plot in the simple example, it also was remembered, and if I check the, uh, for example, here I'm checking the uh, size of an of an al uh, of the second output of the system. It is here. It is rather, uh, very very small. It is just uh, it is le less than hundred bytes. But sometimes, if you will output some very large and complex structure, here can be megabytes. Also, uh, and <clears throat> sometimes can be a problem. Well, as a, if you interested in more formal in, uh, introductions into this uh, Jupyter notebook and IPython, I recommend these three books. They are very uh, nightly uh, written. This py uh, Python for uh, uh, data analysis uh, from Wes McKinney will will be released in a few days, I think, officially. It is second ed edition. Uh, I, uh, I read uh, through the fir uh, first one. It is very, very good written. These two books that are climate to be more about Jupyter and uh, fresh IPython things are not very good, not, not recommend them. And of course, there are a lot of um, Doc documentation on read the, uh, on read the doc site of Jupyter, but unfortunately, the developers put more thoughts into the new features and fixing bugs than on documenting it. So it is uh, still a, lo a lot of pieces like work in progress or things just copied from uh, older uh, versions of the documentation, not very actual right now. And uh, well, w one of the good examples of using the uh, Jupyter notebooks is this blog by uh, uh, American astrophysicist Jake Vanderplatz. He blogs a lot about Python, about numerical methods, about notebooks, and he uh, use uh, uh, he just prepares his blog post as a Jupyter notebooks, then converts them automatically into the pages and. Everybody can see it, comment, and so on. Well, now uh, the next part of my talk is about using the Jupyter as a leaf uh, document. When, uh, what, what is it all about? When you do some computations, produce some outputs, some plots, some figures, something, it is, it, it is possible to store it and uh, use it as a, a, a uh, combined with comments, combined with explanations, and use it as a kind of literary computing or reproducible search. It is, you can put it on, uh, on some public or not some public place, and your collaborator, pe people from your team, or people outside from your team, just from some part of, uh, decent part of the world, can check this, see it, uh, analyze your results, reproduce it if uh, the if the library is available, and check if uh, your results is good, and use it, for example, to write this code for for integration or something. And this contain code explanations. Sometimes people say that code is the best uh, documentation, but as at least my practice told, sometimes the code lacks important things like why it is. Code is so uh, so. What is the uh, important impo important things you sh you should know about this code and so on? But and these um, rich text uh, features enable to add as com as complex explanations and references as necessary. And 
as uh, the Jupyter is based on J uh, JSON, this can be, uh, it is very standard thing and can be analyzed by third party tools and can be put into a version control system without the results is very good in version control system. With the results it can be a, a, bit, a, a bit harder, but uh, there are some special packages like this NBDIME that helps, for example, Git to understand the differences between different versions. And more importantly, if uh, some of uh, your collaborators don't have spe uh, special, uh, powerful uh, uh, enough GPUs, for example, as a specialized hardware, or if uh, you use some spe very specialized or proprietary software, you can still uh, you can still communicate, you can, you can still uh, give others possibility to see your results and analyze them. And uh, more importantly, if the uh, notebook is already in, in some place on the web, for example in GitHub, the NB viewer is a special uh, software from uh, Jupyter uh, developers. It can be used to just show this notebook to everybody who can access to internet. Plus, uh, the NB viewer uh, is a company by another utility. It's called NB Convert, and this uh, this can be used to produce some other format from the notebook. It can be XML or RST or slideshows. One of the previous one of the previous versions of this uh, presentation was just converted to a reveal JS based slideshow. Or it can be a Python file with, uh, with the comments, or it can be a Latex or, uh, for, for a documentation, for a book, or for some kind of thesis for st students, and so on. And uh, as I have already told, it can be just used to produce presentations. And <clears throat> It is based on Reveal.js, uh, Reveal rather popular library for this, and for example, my slide use another approach, it is called Reveal.js. It, um, uh, it, it, it is a project from one of the core uh, developers of uh, Jupyter, and it is just special format to, to switch the notebook from its uh, editing and uh, observing mode into this into slide like here. And uh, well, it is enough for the documents. And well, sometimes you need more uh, interactive means for uh, for uh, the results. For this, it is um, it, for, for this the Jupyter notebook can be used as universal data science front end. These words, universal data science front end, is a motto of recent conference, uh, the inauguration uh, conference on spe uh, specifically for on, uh, on Jupyter notebooks called JupyterCon. It was in this August in, I guess in in New York somewhere in America. <coughs> and oh, st starting from this architecture. The people now can add independent changes into browser site, into JavaScript site, or into the kernel, or both, provided they do not uh, they uh, don't uh, do not use the APIs used there, and add some extra new things here. For example, very popular add-on is uh, IP widgets. It is just set of normal buttons. Uh, uh, drop-down drop boxes and so on that can be uh, can be used to uh, provide simple forms that user can not type code but just pressing the buttons and interact with uh, uh, with some Python stuff or <coughs> so, or probably some complex uh, NumPy based library without uh, without typing and uh, and uh, and front end without any ja uh, JavaScript coding, but this is very uh, very interactive and this and this is cannot be for example converted into the PDFs. And one example that I want to show you is very leaf 3D plots. 
Sometimes 3D analysis of some data can be much more superior than two dimensions. And it is rather simple. It is necessary to install it, then import, then prepare some data in this, in this example, very simple function. And then it can be seen like here, and I can just Sorry. Okay, here. Yeah. And I can, for example, see it from different perspectives, uh, analyze it in full screen, and so on. And moreover, it can be even be combined with some kind of animation, like here. Oh, and to finalize my talk, I want to mention one more rather interesting application of Jupyter Notebooks. These three gentlemen in a month will receive one million euros from Swedish King as a Nobel Prize in physics this year. Uh, these guys were the leaders of a uh, big collaboration that uh, mm, discovered uh, the mm, gravitational waves a few, uh, few years before. And this uh, discovery was rather interesting because gravitational wave is very, very faint signal, very, very much affected by noise. It is, was necessary to create very sophisticated uh, algorithms of signal processing just to extract the necessary data of some black hole collisions far in the universe to, uh, to, to see and to understand. And the, all the results of uh, their work is already available precisely as a notebooks. So anybody who is interested can download the notebooks and data from here see the data, or just go to this interactive uh, place uh, provided uh, in uh, Microsoft now provides uh, free hosting of notebooks on this Azure service. And it will just look like this. You can see, you can analyze the code if necessary, you can go through the details. Unfortunately, voice. Uh, unfortunately, the sound is not working here. But just pressing, uh, just pressing here, one can hear the voice of the universe. For me, it's rather impressive. So you can find me in the Facebook. You can find me in the Twitter. The slides of this presentation are available in the uh, GitHub. Uh, as far as I remember, the references are already in online program on peterpie.com. And thank you very much. Please, questions. A small question, uh, you've drawn a small diagram, are there any tools for drawing different plots uh, and diagrams in the notebook? Yes, uh, the question was about uh, the possibility to draw pr uh, nice diagrams here. The short answer is not. <laughs> this diagram was created just as the usual PNG file, as a graphical file, and then inserted into the notebook. Unfortunately, here not. Or uh, if, uh, if necessary, you can draw almost everything uh, programmatically using Matplotlib library and then insert it here in the notebook, but it can be... Well, uh, yes. Sorry. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, you can probably draw like uh, graphs in uh, dot programming language yes, and uh, exactly. uh, import it as a shell script, but uh, yes. uh, th there is no native tool. Uh, yes, also you can use NetworkX uh, library for Python. Mm -hmm. 
It is fully compatible with this uh, Jupyter stuff, so you can just uh, use it from there and, and uh, uh, sh show your results even leave. Can those uh, graphics and diagrams be dynamic? Uh, for example, I want to adjust one parameter and see how the diagram changes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. It, 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 it's very easy and it can be even used for such presentations. Or conversely, you can use it for uh, you can use it interactively in your own work. You can add. Uh, you, you can, for example. S uh, change some value in the notebook, press control enter and see the uh, result, or you can add special uh, spe uh, special thing based on IPython, uh, IP, uh, IP widgets, and then you can add, for example, slider. You move the slider, your result is changing automatically, leave. Oh, so this code is sent to server, is interpreted, and the result is uh, rendered. Yes, it, it is. It, yes, it, it, in general, so or you can write it a bit more. It, it, for example, here in this in this three-dimensional example, here is no code currently uh, changed on server. It's just an object. Uh, transferred from the uh, from the um, server to here to the notebook, and here it is uh, just displayed using i uh, using JavaScript library, uh, accelerated using WebGL, as far as I uh, understand this. And uh, here you can just explore your, your data. Alternatively, you can use it as as you told that. You create a, spe a special thing here, pre press, uh, press some button, uh, uh, request a send to the server, and then re a result is rendered. Uh, I have a little bit silly question, maybe as I'm not an experienced user of IPython, uh, but could you please open the slide with architecture? Uh, oh, so okay. sorry. Uh, here we can see kernel. Uh, do I understand correctly? This is some backend with Python distribution, right? Yes. And uh, is it possible to have several kernels? Exactly. Uh, I mean, if if uh, to to have uh, to to make some comparison, for example, with different uh, Python distributions on one page, is it possible? <sighs> well. I think it can be tricky, but it is possible. Uh, but you can, uh, what you definitely can do, you can uh, run here several servers to parallelize your computations. But if you, if you need uh, several servers from different distributions, or from this, for example, from different virtual environments, it can be a bit more tricky. Uh, I don't remember exactly what what the steps are necessary, but I think it's uh, it's doable at least. And w where can I choo choo choose the kernel on the on the client side, or or, or, or I should uh, or, or or I must um, uh, have some settings files on the server side? Uh, no, uh, the Jupyter have a special UI uh, UI things for the. Uh, let me just show you. I mean, I just open the browser and can cho choose the interpreter. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yes, because... Uh, for, for, for the whole page or for the part of the page? Uh, because, see, here is uh, here in the front, uh, in, in the starting page of uh, this application, you can see several notebooks. And when you create new one he, uh, using this button here, new, you can select the uh, the kernel. You can select. Uh, you can create, for example, one on the Python three, other with Python uh, two, another with Python three with, from se uh, from specific uh, environment and so on. I don't remember how to start the notebook with particular uh, kernel, but I think it's doable. But but I I will have different different notebook for uh, with different interpreters mm -hmm. and. And I, I can see them only separately, right? Mm, yes. 
I, I, and I would like to see on the, on the one page oh, uh, some two pieces. I think, uh, I think I just forgot how to do this because I definitely know that it is possible to combine different programming languages in, in one notebook. Mm. You can, for example, have uh, Python in one cell and some, uh, I don't know, Java or C or Fortran or whatever in, in another cell. Because is it, uh, is it, uh, all of this stuff was uh, now is designed for extensibility and flexibility. Sometimes it's not very, yeah, yeah, not, not that, very that evident, but this stuff is rather feature uh, is very have very, very rich features and it's uh, necessary just to explore, uh, see documentations, uh, ask people and so on. Mm -hmm. But, but then, I think it's possible. But then uh, there should be some options not for the notebook, but. Inside the yes, one notebook, inside the, inside the uh, yes, inside the notebook cells, uh, there is a special functionality called magic commands. Mm. If you prepend, <laughs> uh, good. Uh, yeah, sounds very uh, very funny, but if you prepend, uh, 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 they are prepared uh, started with uh, two uh, percent signs. And uh, they have spe uh, spe uh, and the, uh, and when some common stuff with two uh, person size, it means do something very very special with this cell, and this is used for example to run uh, s uh, to, to compile the uh, content of this cell using Cyton and uh, to, for for faster uh, run or use a different language for this cell and so on. Uh, it, is, it is necessary to check the docu how to do this. Okay, thank you. Are we out of time? Or no? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, uh, actually, we have uh, a couple of minutes. All right, so here's the question. Mi <laughs> Five <laughs> minutes, I think. All right. Just, um, so you mentioned a few ways to version, uh, to version control the Jupyter notebooks, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there's VCS way, or you could just store it on shared device, like on S3 or something like this. Uh, what do you personally use in your company? Do you version control it really, or you just store it on some shared device where all the people can see the um, notebooks and work them with them uh, simultaneously? It depends. So, well, it depends. Like, uh, yes, the, the it, depe it yeah. depends on on in the well in my uh, in my current job and in my previous. Uh, uh, experience uh, the, uh, the way to store the notebook is really depend on the, what is its uh, usage. For example, if it is uh, a, a part of a larger project, it's e it's better to s just store it without the results on the same uh, VCS as a main project. If it sh if it is just uh, <coughs> some st uh, some important step in R and D work, then it's better to store it in a common place. In uh, when all of the team can assess it or pu put it together with the result to the uh, to, to the VCS, but but not not intending to change it, or vice versa. I think it's uh, it's qu it's a question. Uh, well, it's not not simple to answer this because it's mostly depend on what do you want to do this, what do you want to, to do with this notebook. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, one question. Uh, what is the most convenient way you suggest to export RISE presentation to an HTML file standalone? For RISE presentation, no. For the, uh, f if you, uh, b because the RISE presentation relates on the running server, on the running Jupyter server. But if you uh, use another approach using NB convert, then it's just uh, one command that converts the in, in IPNB file into an HTML file and you can use it. Yeah, but with NB convert, it's just quite buggy to, to edit the slides and to edit uh, the presentation. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, could you tell me, please, how many times you have spent an hours to in blowing your mind after accidentally reuse a variable in uh, Jupyter? Not very much. 
Uh, but I, yes, I know that some people uh, complain about not not, not proper uh, order because sometimes you if, if you if you um, execute your cells not in their logical not as a visible order, then uh, the result can be very funny. Uh, but uh, on the uh, on the other hand, I have seen just the same stuff, for example, in uh, math uh, in MathCAD package. Rather, uh, rather all software, but uh, also based on the notebook or live document uh, idea. I think it's not the not not, not the results of uh, of Jupyter itself. It's just the results of the of this approach. If you if you fine with it, okay. If 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 not, but for uh, for many uh, for, for many projects, it's not the proper approach. Then, Okay, it's better, uh, it's, it's better to, to create a uh, usual front end or usual UI uh, desktop stuff, but not, not this one. Thank you. Yeah, you could use suffixes, numbered suffixes for each uh, variable, and it will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, when you're doing R&D for a couple of weeks, uh, your notebook uh, will be kind of... Uh, very long and uh, it will have a lot of uh, cells. So uh, in my practice and the practice of a lot of uh, uh, researchers, I know it's very hard to use in a long way. I think it's better to split it into, into parts in this thing. It, it is just a question how to, what, how to organize the process itself, uh, a process as a whole. Well, I think one. Yeah. A very quick comment on this. What I do is just compulsively restart the netbook and check that it ex executes. If you do it immediately, you remember what's the problem. If you do it after two weeks, it's a mess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nikolai. Uh, yeah. <laughs>